to get into the city, it's like 30 to 40 minutes. I mean, we have a bunch of public transportation, so it's pretty convenient. It's much easier to like go around the city than in the United States. So first I would like to talk a little bit about our language. So it's um, Hungarian. This is the official language of the country and this is the only language that's official and pretty much everyone is speaking Hungarian. The younger generation is speaking English, uh, but uh, during the uh, communism people, even my parents had to learn Russian. So, but no one ever learned it actually. So <laughs> uh, there's a gap uh, in there. Uh, so um, Hungarian language belongs to the Uralic a language uh, family. So it's pretty unique. Um, we are surrounded by Slavic uh, languages, uh, but Hungarian is very uh, different. Our sounds are a little similar to Finnish and to, I think it's here to some other uh, smaller languages, but um, I don't think we share any words uh, with them that I know of. Um, we borrow some words from the from the Turkey from Turkey uh, when they were in the country for a couple years, 150. I will talk about it, um, but otherwise it's pretty unique. So um, it's called an agglutinative language. So all these uh, prefixes and all that uh, go to the end of our words, uh, verbs, and adjectives and all that. So I just, uh, here's an example. So pair, it means um, kurta. And if I say on the pairs, I, I don't put on the, in front of the word, but I just put it on there. So it says kurta again. And this is the longest word. Uh, you know, one ever uses it. So this is the longest that they could make up. It does make sense, but I can't think of a single situation that someone would say this word and I'm not going to because <laughs> I usually mess up. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is our brief history. It's uh, kind of hard to talk about it briefly because we have a pretty long and uh, bloody history sometimes. Uh, but I will ta try to try to briefly talk about it. Um, so let's start with the medieval Hungary. So we came to the car. Padian Basin, so where we are at the moment in um, uh, the 800s, end of the 800s, uh, but we don't exactly know because, um, well, it was a while ago. So there's a, there are debates about where we came from. Well, anyway, uh, when we arrived here, well, not here, but to, to Hungary, we had seven uh, leaders of the seven uh, tribes. So their name is, I'm not sure if it's exact because no one knows, but what um, historians think is that their name was uh, Amos, Elud, Kent, On, Tash, Huba, and uh, Tetin, or Tehotem. That's under debate. <laughs> um, and then in 1000 or 1001, uh, we got our first uh, king, Stephen I. So in Hungarian, he is uh, Sant Istvan, Sen stands for Sent in English. So he was our first um, king who basically established a Christian Hungary. Um, well, we got a lot of help from uh, Western Europe, probably because they were a little fed up with us because these tribes, um, every year they went to Western Europe um, to steal, and kill a bunch of people and they didn't really like it. So uh, they sent uh, people from Italy, and uh, I believe mainly from Italy, who basically helped Stephen to, to turn the country into uh, Christianity. And well, it, it worked eventually. Um, and so he was the first, um, he was the first king. Um, and he's still a, uh, like he's probably one of the biggest, well, most popular kings of the country, uh, the first one. 
Um, and then until 1526, we were pretty good. We were a kingdom. We did well. Our economy was uh, thriving. Uh, but in 1926, uh, uh, and it actually started uh, in 1920, the Ottomans who are from Turkey, um, they um, attacked the country from the south. Um, and eventually they could uh, get all the way to Buda, which is uh, the capital. So at that time it wasn't Budapest, but uh, only Buda. Um, so they, uh, they got to the city uh, and they controlled it uh, for 150 years. Um, uh, yeah. And then after 150 years, the Habsburgs, who were the leaders of the, uh, Western Europe, they uh, well didn't really like it because they were not Christian. Uh, they were Muslim. Um, and they decided to help us uh, get them out. And well, we did eventually. Uh, but we again lost our independence. Uh, we did have some independence during the Ottoman years because a third of the country was still um, the Hungarian kingdom ruled by Hungarians. Um, but after the Holy League from uh, Western Europe and the Habsburgs helped, they pretty much took over uh, the control of the country. And so from uh, the 18th century to the first of World War, we were under the control of the Habsburgs. And it was not a very nice um, all the way uh, because uh, especially during the 18th century, they were very violent. They had a bunch of reforms. They controlled the country um, and the Hungarians uh, didn't really like it. So by uh, 1711, a very famous person his name is uh, Rakuti Ferenc, Ferenc Rakuti. So his, his Hungarian name is actually Rakuti Ferenc because our name, but I forgot to mention, uh, my family name is my first name at home. So I'm using, this time I'm using the Hungarian version. <laughs> uh, so he was a reformer uh, and he was able to start uh, like debates with the Habsburgs and he could restore some type of um, independence uh, in the country. Uh, but the problem is um, the Habsburg still didn't let us to have a separate um, army. So it was together uh, with them. And then in 1980, uh, a king, his Joseph II, he was also called King of Hats. At least this is how we call him because he was wearing hats often. Uh, he, um, he enforced other reforms. Um, and the worst one that we really didn't like was uh, that the official language of the country, of the empire, uh, became German. And so this time, the national self-consciousness on a political and cultural level started to arise. and. Um, the Hungarian language became more important for people. So um, at this time, it's called the reform age or era. Uh, we had a phenomena uh, called language renewing, I would say, when we pretty much came up with new words that we wanted to use. Some of them we still use, some of them sounds pretty ridiculous now because they uh, didn't become words that we actually use. Uh, but um, at the time, uh, our literature became more, uh, well, developed or sophisticated, I would say. And uh, people started to feel this, um, people wanted to be independent from the Habsburgs. Uh, and then um, eventually we, I, I don't talk about a lot of things, it's kind of hard, but uh, but eventually we got to the first uh, World War um, and we were part of Austria. So it's called the Austro-Hungarian uh, monarchy. Uh, and we were fighting uh, with them. Well, we didn't do very well. And by the end of uh, the war, uh, we were, well, somewhat um, independent. 
uh, but since uh, the winning uh, parties uh, blamed Hungary for starting the war um, and for all the losses, monetary losses, uh, they took away a big chunk of our country. I will talk about it in the next uh, slide. Actually, I'm gonna talk about it now. So this is called the Treaty of Trianon. So we say it was a peace order, which is pretty controversial. Uh, we were forced to give up uh, two thirds of the country. Um, and uh, yeah, it happened in 1920, June 4th. And it ended, formally ended the, the first bird war between the kingdom of Hungary and the, uh, and the allies. Uh, but we lost a lot of territories and we lost a lot of people. So before in 1920, the population was around 20 million. By this time, it was, uh, I think uh, around six or seven. Yeah, seven and a half uh, million. Uh, so because of this um, event, um, Hungarians after the First World War really wanted to get their uh, territories back. So this became the major, well, aim. Um, and that's why we started to, um, we started to um, like ask, for help pretty much from uh, Italy and Germany. So Italy was fascist at the time. Germany was ruled by the Nazis, uh, so Hitler. Uh, and we ended up um, entering uh, the Second World War um, and uh, against the Soviet Union. Uh, well, the, what, the reason why we entered it is because of a bombing from a plane that had no, like no one knows if it was actually a Soviet uh, plane or it was someone else like from Germany or Italy who wanted us to enter the war. But regardless, we entered it. We didn't do well again during this time. 64% uh, of the economy was destroyed. A lot of uh, people died and probably everyone knows about the Holocaust uh, in Hungary, uh, 60, 600,000 Jews were killed. Um, and um, after, after the, the Second World War, uh, the Soviets uh, stayed in the country because uh, we fought with them during the, the end of the Second World War, around the end, and well, they ended up staying and we became a satellite state of the Soviet uh, Union. Um, and the living standards were, were uh, declining, um, which eventually led to the revolution in 1956, October 23rd, uh, which is actually coming up. Uh, so this eventually led to the withdrawal of the Soviet troops uh, but it took uh, a good 40 years because the last troops left the country in 1990 and 1991. Uh, so, during, so after the revolution, a lot of politicians who supported uh, the movement were um, executed, but we were able to, um, in, the, in the eyes of the world, we were able to show to everyone that the Soviets are and the communism, communism they built is not feasible anymore. And uh, in 1989, we went through a transition from communism to democracy. It's called the regime change. And we became the third Republic of uh, Hungary and pretty much that's still the, the case. So we are democratic at the moment. Okay, so that's all about history. Uh, I will I will talk about uh, some of the buildings uh, we have, the architecture. It's a little more fun. <laughs> so the style of the city center is Romanesque, Gothic, Renaissance, Baroque, and uh, the combination of these. Um, the Roman Empire was already in the uh, in the country. Um, 
the first century. Uh, well, they left some ruins uh, in Budapest, but not much. It's not too extensive, but it's interesting. Um, and then uh, during the Ottoman Wars, we didn't really build anything or it was destroyed because that, that was not the major thing we did at the time. Um, and so when we, when they finally went, left the country, we, start, uh, we started to rebuild, uh, rebuild it. And at that time, a lot of medieval buildings were uh, destroyed. So we don't really have those anymore. And then in the 19th century, because of an urban development program, uh, a lot of Baroque and other historical ho homes were uh, destroyed. So um, most of the buildings are from after this time. So for example, after the Second World War, uh, so the city was destroyed. Uh, we fought, as I said, against the Soviets and the Romanians, uh, the Romanian troops. So they bombed the, the, the city. Um, and then the Nazis, the uh, Germans, uh, destroyed all the bridges because they didn't want the Red Army to um, uh, enter across the river because the river um, pretty much separates the two parts of Budapest. So this is, uh, it's called Ponton. Bridge, I think. Also, uh, this is like the remains of of the of the bridges here, here and there, and all of them were destroyed. And uh, and this is how it looked like. This is the most famous bridge uh, we have. This is the chain bridge. And this is how it looks like now. It was rebuilt and it's actually under renovation at the moment because it's not, it was not in a great condition. Um, at least the structure of it. So in a couple of years, it will look just like this. Uh, the parliament, I guess you can see the name of the buildings in Hungarian under the English version. So the parliament is uh, the second biggest in Europe. It was completed in 1904, uh, but the government already used it in 1902. Uh, the style is Gothic Renaissance and Neo-Gothic, and this, uh, the structure, like the base of it is borough. Um, so I, I don't know much about these styles. I know the Gothic elements can be seen on the pointy uh, roofs and then the pretty narrow um, windows. Um, yeah, so currently it's used well by tourists. Um, anyone can go in who gets a ticket, can walk around. Um, and um, the National Assembly of Hungary is, is here as well. So the government debates and, and uh, yeah, a lot of government things happen here. And what I to the, so I have other, some other pictures I wanted to show you guys from different angles. Uh, I couldn't find anything from closer, but it's very, very pretty from close. It's very detailed. And it looks very clean because it was cleaned in, I think, like 10 years ago or something. But it was pretty brown before. It didn't look great. And these are the um, holy crown. This is the holy crown and the coronation uh, badges. Uh, in the parliament. No one knows for sure if it's original or not. They say it is, but there are some debates about it. Um, and they don't know if the crown on the top is supposed to look like this or if it was, if it was straight. So they don't know if it was um, damaged. So Fisherman's Bastion, uh, Halas Bastion uh, in Hungarian, it was built as a, as a lookout tower. So it's not an actual, like, it kind of looked like a castle a little bit, but it was built in for, for tourists and for people at the time who had a lot of money, I guess. <laughs> uh, it was built up um, uh, pretty fast. It's 120 years old. Um, it's beautiful. 
again, the style is a mix of all these um, simply because, I don't know, they like to use different um, elements. And it's a, it's a tourist attraction at the time. So some other pictures of it. It's not too big actually. It's not small, but it's not huge. Uh, the Buddha castle or Budaivat is actually very old. It was built in the sub, uh, 14th uh, century, but um, since it was destroyed multiple times over the history, it was uh, renovated. And uh, that's why uh, we can see different uh, styles, different elements. So first it was completed in 1265. And then uh, it was, um, most of the other sites was built in 1749 and 69. Uh, at the moment, uh, we can find two uh, museums inside. Uh, so if you wanna go in, you have to buy a ticket and go to the museum, uh, but you can go up and just walk around here. And I have been up here multiple times because you can really see the sunrise from here. So if you wanna wake up early and go up, you can see the sunrise, it's beautiful and the water. It's, uh, it's very pretty. Here are some other uh, images. We have a bunch of lights during the night. So yeah, it's, it's very nice. And here's another like path that you can walk. It's next to the castle. Uh, the Matches Church or Matches Temple is um, again. It's I'm sorry. It's uh, it's pretty old. It was built in the 11th century, but it was destroyed again multiple times, uh, just like everything else. And it was rebuilt in the 15th century. So at the time, it was. They say it was destroyed all the way so they pretty much have to rebuild the whole thing but they're not certain maybe maybe some elements were still there so they only renovated um currently it's i'm sorry currently it's a church and a tourist attraction um and uh yeah that's all <laughs> here's some images I think it's very interesting uh, that it's it's dark and the rest is super colorful. So the roof is is very colorful. I think it's beautiful. And this is the inside. Uh, here is square. It's um, kind of a new uh, monument. It was uh, built first. Uh, in order to like um, be a site for mass uh, events, uh, for demonstrations and other political events. And then during the communist, like communism, uh, they wanted to uh, remodel it and they actually did. I'm sorry. Uh, so they did remodel it before it was, um, I will show other pictures. It was a bunch of, uh, um, flowers around and uh, nature, but uh, then they changed it a little bit. And at that time they changed the statue. So um, uh, here you guys can see um, kings, actually Hungarian kings, but before it was Habsburg kings. Um, and during the communism, we didn't like it. So we just changed all of them, most of them. And this is uh, Gabriel, the angel and uh, holding the, um, the holy crown. And something else I forgot about. Oh, a double cross. Here's another. I couldn't find any other images like from closer. And um, that's all about the buildings pretty much. Uh, we are called the land of waters because we have a lot of hot springs under the surface. Uh, as I know, it's because the, the crust is very thin uh, in the area of Hungary. So that's why not only in Budapest, but all over the country, we have a lot of uh, spas 
uh, with different kind of uh, water. So different minerals are dissolved and it's used for uh, medical purposes. And already uh, the Romans uh, used these, but I don't think we have very many spas from that era. Uh, but during the Ottoman uh, wars, they did build uh, some baths. And this is one of them. This is the Rudaschwürde, uh, Rudasch Spa. This is the oldest one that we have. And the uh, Seicheni, Georgefürde Seicheni Spa. This is, uh, I'm not sure about when it was built, but this is currently a very popular one. I have been here a couple of times and uh, yeah, it's very fun. And they have parties. <laughs> I've never been here, but yeah. And a little bit about like more personal things that I would like to talk about. This is the Margaret Island. It's basically a big park with some restaurants and bars, but not very many. There's a sports center here um, and people go there just to walk or bike. Uh, it's very nice to like, get out of the city, but still be in the city. And it's pretty big. It's not visible on, from this picture, but it's, it's big and massive. And this is the Margaret. Uh, bridge that is seen here. Uh, we have a bunch of uh, bars called ruin bars. So what happened here, uh, oh, it's not working. Well, anyway, what happened here is that they bought uh, an apartment that was pretty much destroyed and they decided they are not going to renovated they're just going to make it into a bar and so when you go and you can sit in bathtubs and half cards and I think in toilets as well so you can find it every, anything you want and currently uh, well we have new bars as well this is my favorite it's called uh, 26 because it's almost always 26 degrees celsius in here it's like a jungle bar kind of it's uh it's very it's very nice to be there and this is the other one, this is called uh, 36 bar. Uh, it's called, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, 360, because you can see all around, it's, it's a rooftop and you can see the whole city around. And this is the last thing, I believe. Uh, this is uh, Deag Ferenc Square. This is again, a park in the middle of the city. This is where we came with my friends for night, so it's, um, there are a bunch of people here and enjoying their night. Well, I think I've been talking too much, but here's some of our food. This is goulash, uh, our national like dish. And this is a potato with egg and sour cream. I love it, but it's kind of hard to remake them here because I don't have the ingredients for it. <laughs> and this is our pancake. Our pancake is very thin, not like American. And we fill it with, well, mainly jam and you can find a salty version as well. Okay, I have to run through this and it's not even working, but uh, this is a uh, Galertial. You can go up here. We have a statue, it's called uh, Statue of Liberty, um, like taking care of the city. That's her uh, purpose. And you can like go up there and hike and see the city. And thank you for your attention. Any questions? Yes. I have some questions. Okay. Um, I noticed your name is Sarkozy. Yes. Are you related to the former president? No. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, where, where does the Danube originate and where does it terminate? Is it it goes to. I think it goes to the Black Sea. Yeah. So I think it goes to the Black Sea and it comes from the Black Forest. I'm not sure, honestly. I think I know that Black Sea has something to do with it. What was the uh, situation with the refugees? The Taliban was trying to keep them all out. What's the situation with? Oh. Refugees from Central Asia and, uh, oh, that's the, the current um, the current problem, you mean? Like a couple of years ago? 
Yeah, so it's I, I wanna I wanna highlight that our current government is not great. Uh, it's uh, it's um, it doesn't like other than Hungarians and people of color. So it's not pretty. But people are not like that, especially from big cities, and we have a couple of them. Um, in big cities, people are, are are liberal, but the government was able to pretty much destroy the country so much that those people are not educated. Uh, they are afraid of migrants for no reason. They have never seen any, but they were told that they were going to come and still your job and your women. So um, it, was not, it was not pretty, but I know that a lot of volunteers went to mainly uh, railway stations and uh, helped them, brought them food and water and clothes and um, phones even. So yeah, at the moment, um, at the moment we do have uh, refugees, but not much because they don't want to stay in Hungary. They would much rather go to um, Western Europe, and they did, most of them, so. In one of your slides, you talked about uh, Hungary losing about two-thirds yeah. of its territory. What countries picked up those territories? So Romania got Transylvania. I think that's the biggest uh, that was taken away, taken to Romania. Um, Croatia got some, uh, Slovakia, uh, Serbia, I think. Uh, they got the biggest, the biggest chunks. So our our, our neighbors, of course. How did you uh, happen to sign the side contract? Oh, it was because I'm a biologist. I'm a bio master's student, so I had to find the research that I'm interested in, and I happened to find it here. Couple of questions. Um, what do young people like yourself do uh, in free time or nightlife or weekends? What sort of activities do you guys like? So our nightlife is big. Uh, we have a lot of bars and uh, clubs. Uh, we have a lot of restaurants too all around. Um, there are some mountains and hills around Budapest, pretty close, not in the city, but like an hour or maximum two, where we can go hiking. We have a big lake called uh, Balaton, pretty close. So a lot of people go there during the summer. Um, and since it's, it's Europe and you drive three hours and you're in another country, it's pretty easy to get out and, and travel during long weekends or during the, during the summer to the foreign countries. And it sounds like your country has a history of some influences of Christianity and of Islam. What is the predominantly practiced religion or lack thereof? What, how would you describe religion here? So we are, uh, we're Christian, but we don't really practice religion. So majority of the country is not religious and doesn't go to church, but if the people who do, they are, they are Christian. And what about higher education? Do you guys have a lot of what is that like? Yeah, we have a we have quite a few. Uh, it's a it's a hard topic. Our government is not great. Hopefully, they will be changed uh, next year during the elections. Um, higher education is good uh, as long as they don't try to influence it too much. Um, yeah, we we have some universities that are pretty famous, if not globally, but in Europe for sure. And what about the state of the economy currently? How would you describe how that's going as up there? Oh, downhill, unfortunately. Yeah, we are hoping that uh, our government will be different next year and we will turn back to Western Europe instead of turning to East, uh, to the Russians, because not like I have any problems with the Russian people, but the Russian government is not necessarily democratic, and that's not what we want. And yeah, it's a, it's a, our current government is pretty corrupt, so that makes things harder. So not great, but hopefully we will get back on our feet.
earlier slides mentioned that. Uh, would you um would you repeat your question? Uh, yeah. the question from the audience before you answer. Uh, uh yeah, yeah, as, as much as far as so, I hold on, hold on. What's the question? What was the question? Was that what she said? Yeah. The question was, one of the slides mentioned Magyars as equating to Hungarians. And I asked if that was correct. Are all Hungarians Magyars? Yeah. And we were said, called, we were called uh, Magyars, I think, by our neighbors back then. And we call ourselves Magyar at the moment as well. Is, is there any is there questions any in Zoom that you want to um, unmute yourself? I know there is one in Zoom says, if there's any restaurants in the area that serve Hungarian food that you know. Um, there is one in uh, San Francisco that's, um, well, that's European but it's not, not uh, Hungarian. I tried it actually, and it's good. It's definitely not super traditional, but it's pretty close. And there is one in New York that I've been to, and it's very good. It's like, it felt like I was eating at home. <laughs> so yeah, not much. I would like to make a comment that um, Hungary is on my bucket list to go. Oh. Uh, with the rich culture and all that, how does it feel like for you to grow up um, like living almost like with all the artifacts of history around you? What, what is, does it feel like? Well, since I grew up there it's, and, and I traveled mainly in Europe, it's pretty natural. Like that's what I always saw. I always loved it, um, but I never knew anything else. Um, and when I came to the U.S., it was pretty weird um, not seeing those historical buildings. There are some um, in the eastern coast, I believe, that I've seen, but not, not as old as our buildings. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's good to be there. It's good to be here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for, for you, um, the culture feels normal. But yes. when you come out of that place, you feel like, oh, um, it is not um, everywhere in, yeah. in the rest yeah. of the world. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. you come. And sometimes we come to another country to know more about ourselves. Yeah. You speak English very well. At what age did you begin studying English? And how long did you study it? I started in uh, primary Masella, school. Marcella, can you repeat the question first? Yeah, of course. The question is, you speak English very well. Um, when did you begin to study is English? And how long did you study it? Is it over? Yeah, sorry, because the Zoom uh, audience have difficulty hearing the live question. She speaks English very well. I asked you at what age she began studying English and how long she studied. So I started in uh, primary school when I was uh, seven, but um, I only, I got very, well, very good, well, good when I first came to the U.S. four years ago for a summer. And then uh, my uh, partner, he's also, is American. So during that four years and, and still he is like teaching me. So I mainly learned when I first came to the U.S. Yeah. And I couldn't speak Hungarian because there was no Hungarian around me. So I was, uh, I was forced to learn it. <laughs> Yes, thank you. You did a really great job on your presentations. Yeah. Thank you. But uh, I was wondering, with the 1100 years of history, like you shared with us just a short time, um, do you remember the uh, story, the history of Gellar Hedge? Yes. Could you tell us about that? 
So I think uh, Galliard was a was a priest, and I have no idea at what time it happened, what era. But um, he was um, killed by he was put in a barrel, and he was like rolled down a Galliard hill, and he died. And that's why that's why the 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 hill was called Galliard Hill. But I'm not sure when it happened. I should look up. Yeah, that's so why I can't remember exactly. We we happened to live in Budapest for a couple of years, and we were there for the 11th anniversary, mm -hmm. probably about the time you were born. <laughs> Both our yep. older two kids, but uh, they had a beautiful firefall uh, right there uh, at the bridge and by Keller Hedge in uh, celebration of that 100 years in the memory of persecuted priest. I just didn't know when exactly that took place. So um, we have we have that celebration on August 20th, August 20th every year. It's the it's the celebration of the state when Hungary when Hungary like become Hungary. So I, I'm not sure if those two are connected. They might be I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I have one more question. With the concern for uh, Soviet occupation happening again, uh, and China is wanting to build a university there, uh, and I know the people are opposing that because it wasn't that long ago yeah. that communism was uh, off to be rid of. And to see people in Hero Square again is amazing to see the freedoms that Hungary has known in this just short time. Spam, what is the feel with the uh, with your generation uh, regarding uh, China wanting to build a university there? Well, I can't think of a single person who supports it. Not even from my generation who were born into freedom and they are not willing to give it up um, because they know the stories from their grandparents, from their parents. Um, and older generation don't want that again. So no one really supports it. And I don't know if it's actually going to happen. Um, they really wanted to and they were about to start, but I, I'm not sure if they actually started and I'm not sure if they will, but hopefully they will not. So. Any other questions in Zoom? Okay, so we uh, thank you, Sita. But before we finalize with coffee hour, I would like to um, invite Kelly Kane, is Sita's um, bulldog friend. Um, Sita has been doing great things here at Fresno State, where she's meeting a great people. She's connecting with a lot of local students. So we thought it would be a good opportunity for invite them to talk about how is your their friendship at Fresno State has grown and how both have be learning from each other um, because I think it's a it's a great cross cultural experience that our local students have. Um, they're learning from our international students, but also um, our domestic students are welcoming international students. So Kelly and Sita are going to be talking about their friendship and how they're thinking and and support here at Fresno State. Okay, so uh, the reason I joined the program is because I was, I didn't know anyone when I moved here, so I figured it would be nice to meet some people uh, from the country, because even though I've been here a couple of times before, I still wanted to, wanted to learn more about the culture. I have never been to California before, so I figured someone who's from here would be great to show me around <laughs> the things that that I should visit or I should go to. And uh, yeah, with, with Kelly and uh, her friend and her friend's bulldog friend, we have been to a couple of places. We had some um, parties in our place. We went to the, to the beach. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a great experience. Um, so I joined because it was in the middle of the pandemic and Doing Zoom is very hard to like make friends and to try to interact with your classmates. No one really has their cameras on. 
it's hard to just be like, hey, let's hang out, let's stay together. And so I was feeling super isolated. And I was like, if I'm feeling isolated, I'm pretty sure these international students who don't know anyone is feeling isolated. So I, I was kept getting these emails from myself to, to like the flyer to join. And so I figured, I mean, I have nothing to lose. <laughs> and me and Zita, she was my uh, second semester. We were friendship. So we each had a different group of friends during our first semester. But I mean, I guess we could kind of say that they weren't really as engaged as we were. So originally it was three people. So it was me, Zita, and another person. But I mean, me and Zina, I guess, clicked a little bit better. So we originally met on Zoom. So we would have Zoom meetings outside of the bulldog parties that we do. Um, luckily during, I guess, during the time when we prepared up, the COVID restrictions were getting a little more slack because the vaccines were coming up. So it was easier for us to meet up uh, in a socially distanced manner. So we were able to like, get drinks together or to have dinner. And so we got to meet and that like helped us bond. Uh, we don't really discuss her being from Hungary a lot. We just kind of just have a regular friendship. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly, um, for um, to come and support today, Sita. Um, so uh, we really appreciate, I know that you haven't never have studied abroad or travel. Mm -hmm. So that's a great opportunity for our domestic students to expose to the world as well. So I know that you're saying that you're not talking about uh, that directly about Hungary, but I'm sure that you're learning a lot from mm -hmm. Sita and from all your Bulldog friends. So thank you. We really appreciate you um, to come today. So let's take our um, I know that there's a final question that it was not answered in the in Zoom. It says, "How expensive is Hungary to live in Hungary?" No, it's not. Well, if you have your paycheck from the U.S., it's not expensive. Uh, it's much cheaper than um, Europe, like the rest of uh, Western Europe, maybe uh, mainly. Uh, drinks are very cheap too. Food is pretty cheap. Uh, being a Hungarian, getting money in Hungary is, and like paying for your life is not as uh, easy, but uh, hopefully it will get, get better. But if anyone wants to travel there, it's not going to be a financial burden, I would say. Any other last minute questions? Okay, well, cool. thank you, Sita. We really enjoyed your presentation you. today. So this is our your certificate of appreciation. So if you could um, stand in the front, so you we could take a picture. And for those in Zoom, if you could open your cameras, Kelly, do you want to be with your friend, Sita? Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, and if you guys could face Mateo, you guys are part. Everybody, the whole group is part of the picture. Oh. Hi, Monica. Hi, Dr. Pinzo Paris. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Good yourself? It's good Pretty to good. get together here. Yeah. <laughs> we have our own powwow. <laughs> and then the yeah. person have their own. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be? Okay. Okay. Thank you everyone in Zoom for joining us today. Have a good evening. Um, you will have to travel a little bit outside of the Central Valley to try some, some Hungarian food. And hopefully, or Sita maybe cook something for us and invite us later. But uh, have a good evening. See you later. See you next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Thank you.